Hello friends, this video on excretory products and their elimination part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Here we are going to talk about the excretion in different animals. So in this lesson we are going to focus on the excretory system of different animals. So first we will talk about all the lower animals and then we will talk about the human excretory system. Now when I say animals, the variety is huge. You can just think of the animal kingdom in your mind and you can just see, okay, there are so many varieties of animals present. So can we expect that the excretory system for all these animals will be the same? The excretory system for a dog would be the same as that in case of a butterfly and that would be the same as in case of a tiger or a bat. That is quite, that is quite impossible. Because since the organisms, even though they are all animals, but their body structure and everything is so different that the excretory system also has to be different in all of them. And that is why we say that different animals of the animal kingdom have different excretory structures. Now, some of them have highly specialized uh, organs, for example, kidneys for the, prosper, for the purpose of excretion, whereas there are some other animals where excretion takes place simply through their body surface. So they do not have any specialized organs. So it actually differs from one phylum to another phylum. So here what we will do is we will quickly discuss about the different ways of excretion for different animals of the animal kingdom. So we will talk about uh, the excretory structures phyla wise. So let us first talk about the phylum platyhelminths. So platyhelminths is the group of flat worms. So platyhelminths have all the flat worms in it. Now these flat worms have specialized cells called flame cells which are used as excretory organs. Now they are specially present for the purpose of excretion. So let us see what are these flame cells. Now these flame cells are nothing but they form a branched system of ciliated tubules throughout the body. So throughout the body you can see a tubular like structures which are all ciliated. So you can actually see the flame cell if you actually look at each of these structures more in, in more detail. Now the presence of these cilia, how does it help? Now cilia are the small hair like structures. Now these cilia, the beating of the cilia actually helps to to make the fluid move along the tubular structure. Due to the presence of the cilia, the fluid actually tends to move and this fluid contains the waste materials of the body. So the flame cells regulate the contents of the interstitial fluid directly. So they are connected to a duct system of pores to expel the waste. So if you see these, all these are connected to a pore and from the pore they are all like thrown to the exterior. So here if you see each of these branched tubules, they have a cap like structure which is called a flame cell. So here you can have some small cells, they will have a cap like structures and those cells will be the flame cells. Now there will be cilia present in each of these tubules. So now due to the movement of the cilia, the fluid will be moving through this network of the ciliated tubules. Now once the fluid moves through the entire network, it will reach to the pores that is an opening to the exterior and through that pore the waste will be thrown out to the exterior. So that is how the platyhelminths uh, excrete. These flame cells also help to maintain osmoregulation. What is osmoregulation? This is a term which is used for the ionic balance of the body. That is, it helps to maintain the correct water and ionic balance of the body. So of course, whenever excretion happens, so it also it not only takes out the waste materials, it also takes out the excess of water or the excess of ions which might be present in the body. So this is how platy helminths excrete. Next is the nematodes. Nematodes were the round worms. The examples of nematodes are Gucciaridia. This is how they look like. Now these nematodes have specialized excretory pores. So even though they do not have specialized organs but they have small openings or minute openings called pores and they are only for the purpose of excretion. 
nitrogenous wastes are excreted in the form of ammonia so directly in the form of ammonia so if it is excreted in the form of ammonia that itself means ammonia being highly soluble in water it is excreted being dissolved in water through these pores however some of the nematodes also have specialized glands called rennet glands which are used to excrete salts but these rennet glands are not present in all nematodes they are mainly present in the marine nematodes that is those which are present in the marine water or sea water now in sea water there will be a lot of salts right because the water is salty so those excess so it is quite obvious that the nematodes which are present in a marine environment they tend to take in a lot of salt so that excess of salts need to be excreted out from their body so for that purpose they have these specialized glands which are unicellular in nature and they are called rennet glands now it is not necessary that one nematode can have only one rennet glands they can have one or multiple rennet glands next is the annelids the best example of annelid would be an earthworm so these are the segmented worms that is their entire body have is distinguished in the form of segments so you can see they all have segments this is one segment this is another segment so it, they are their body is entire body is segmented now they have specialized excretory organs called nephridia this is something interesting as well as important so our worms have specialized organs for excretion called nephridia so what is nephridia so let us quickly look at that now if you talk about uh, where how or where they are present all the, the nephridia they always exist in pairs so here you can see they be these two exist in pairs and these two exist in pairs these two exist in pairs so that is how they exist all the nephridia they exist in pairs nephridia are segmentally arranged coiled tubules so in each segmentally arranged that means each segment you have a pair of nephridia so in each segment they are properly arranged and they are arranged in the form of coiled tubules now from here they might look as some dotted structures but actually they are tube like structures very coiled tube like structures so it is just the you are, you are just viewing it from above so you are not able to see the tube entirely Now there are three types of nephridia that are present in an earthworm. That is septal nephridia, integumentary nephridia, and pharyngeal nephridia. So let us see what are each of them. So if you talk about septal nephridia, they are present on segment fifteen to the last that open into the intestine. So here this is the mouth of the earthworm. right so this septal nephridia it starts from the 15th segment to the last that open into the intestine so towards the end that is the septal nephridia so what do they do they discharge the waste materials into the alimentary canal so this is basically the alimentary canal so so these septal nephridia they will throw the waste products into the alimentary canal integumentary nephridia they are present on the lining of the body wall of segment 3 to the last that open on the body surface so here you can see these are the integumentary the dotted structures which you see they are the integumentary nephridia and they will throw the waste products to the exterior that is they throw it directly to the outside because they are like they are pore like structures on the body surface so they can directly throw it to the exterior and the last one is the pharyngeal nephridia which are present in three pair tufts in the fourth fifth and sixth segment so these are the these 1 2 3 4 5 6 these are the pharyngeal nephridia why they are called pharyngeal because they are present near the pharynx so they discharge waste products into the alimentary canal so this entire canal is the alimentary canal that is the digestive tract so pharyngeal nephridia and intestinal nephridia they throw the waste materials into the alimentary canal and then the alimentary canal will throw it out in the form of uh, feces whereas uh, the integumentary nephridia since they are in connection to the body surface so they throw the waste materials directly to the outside next is the structure of the nephridia now these nephridia regulate the volume and composition of the body fluids as i mentioned before also that the fluids which moves from the internal environment into these 
nephridia these fluids actually they contain all the excess water or the excess ions which might be present in the body that way it helps to regulate the composition of body fluids if you talk about the structure of the nephridium it consists of three parts nephridiostome main body of the nephridium and nephridiopore so let us try to understand the structure of each nephridium now nephridium is the singular form and in plural it is called nephridia okay so it has mainly three parts nephridiostome main body of the nephridium and the nephridiopore now let us see how it looks like so this nephridiostome this is a funnel shaped structure so it is like a funnel something like this like how you have a funnel right this is how it looks like so this is your nephridiostome now what does it do a funnel you would have used a funnel often to pour a liquid let us suppose if you want to pour a liquid in a, a bottle which has a very uh, narrow neck the neck is not very wide in that case how do you pour the liquid if you directly try to pour it uh, i mean it might spill out so that is why we often use a funnel so that the liquid just gets inside through that funnel so here this funnel called nephridiostome is also that funnel where the coelomic fluid along with the waste enters so this is where the fluid enters and this fluid also has the wastes the next part is the main body of the nephridium this main body is nothing but a tube like structure so this is actually connected to a tube like structure somewhat like this so it is like all coiled so a coiled tube like structure forms the body of the nephridium right so this thin loop what does this loop does now the fluid now flows through this tubular structure now while it flows through this entire body of the nephridium reabsorption takes place that means in that fluid as i said the fluid has wastes but that doesn't mean that the fluid only has waste the fluid also have uh, like um, useful substances like glucose amino acids it also has water and it also has wastes so while the fluid travels throughout the body of the nephridium the cells on the lining of these tubular structure they tend to reabsorb the useful substances for example glucose amino acids uh, useful solutes as well as some amount of water all those things get reabsorbed now whatever is left out that is the waste so what happens to that waste that waste goes to the last part that is the nephridiopore nephridiopore is nothing but a small pore which is present on the surface of the body wall so here you can look at these pores which are present on the surface so this is a nephridiopore so finally the waste which is actually the waste so now the fluid only has waste because all the useful substances have been reabsorbed while it was passing through the body of the nephridium now these wastes will be expelled outside through this pore so now if you look at the, the functioning or the if you look at the way an nephridia functions it is you can say that it is analogous to the human kidney even in human beings the kidney as well as the other excretory organs together perform a similar sort of function so when we will talk about the human excretory system you will get to know about that so this is how the nephridia works in case of an earthworm so a ciliated tunnel leads to a long coiled tube which in turn leads to a bladder so when you say bladder where is the bladder located bladder is located somewhere here which is used to store this fluid temporarily and then from this bladder it actually gets discharged through the small pore thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again